So my brothers and my sisters, as we embrace this urgency of creating the beloved community, now is the time to be loved. Love means understanding, redemptive goodwill toward all which seeks nothing in return. So be loved by implementing the demands of justice to eliminate the school to prison pipeline that has so many black children entrapped. Be loved by correcting voting policies that seek to suppress the votes of millions of black and brown people. Be loved and implement the demands of justice by transforming a society that is disproportionately violent toward black lives, including black transgendered lives and indigenous lives. Be loved and correct false narratives and economic policies that continue to divide and pit poor and working class black and white people against each other. Be loved and implement demands of justice where systems and structures are deconstructed and lead the way of living in community that reimagines just humane, equitable, and sustainable policies, practices, and behaviors. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them who hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and abuse you. Be loved and do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Students with King serves as the King Center's flagship engagement platform for elementary, middle, and high school students, highlighting the legacies of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Mrs. Coretta Scott King, and the impact of the 20th century American Civil Rights Movement. Our dynamic and interactive programming has reached over a million students worldwide. Our core learning programs introduce students to the philosophy of Kingian nonviolence, coined Nonviolence 365, and provide important lessons about how they can apply nonviolence in their immediate environment. Whether you're an educator who is looking for ways to bring the King legacy into your classroom, a student who wants to learn more about this powerful moral movement, or a parent who wants to get your child involved in character building and literacy development activities. Students with King is your one-stop shop for unique lesson plans, teaching resources, educational field trips, and other opportunities to engage with the history of the American Civil Rights Movement and its powerful leaders. We look forward to engaging with you and your students. Together we can build the next generation of compassionate, courageous, and conscientious leaders. Good morning. Welcome to our 2022-23 school year Student with King Reading Corner. On behalf of Dr. Bernice A. King, Dr. Kalisha Grave, and myself, thanks for joining and supporting the learning experience. Teachers, the survey is vital to the success of the Student with King program, which includes our Reading Corner, our Civil Rights Interactive Panel, as well as our tours that you visit at the King Center. So please take out your phones at this time, scan the QR code, and give me feedback on this survey. Once again, thank you for joining, and I hope you enjoyed today's Reading Corner. Now, let's go to Tariq. Good morning. So glad to see you. I'm not going to belay it. Enjoy yourself and have a great time. So glad to have you back this year. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It is um, a blessing and an honor to be part of something that is just so successful. And we've been doing this program for years. And so I'm just excited to be a part of it again. So I appreciate you guys. 
I'm excited to have you, and I'm excited to have the thousands of students and teachers that are joining us this morning. So once again, thank you for coming back, and I'll turn the program over to you. Absolutely. Yeah, guys. So those of you guys who have been tuning in for years, y'all already know the drill. We, of course, always got to start with the roll call. So go ahead, make sure you shout out your state, your city, classroom, school. We, um, we want to shout some of you guys out. I was actually looking. Uh, looking at the YouTube, and I've seen a few. I've seen the Cab Preparatory Academy, second grade, um, PS 132, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Okay, shout shouting y'all out. Avondale Elementary, fourth grade, um, Kristen Murray from Florida. Uh, we got a lot of you guys tuning in this morning, so we appreciate you guys. We are live on the YouTube and on the King Center Facebook page as well. I want to go ahead and introduce you guys to our guest. She's actually a familiar guest. We had her on Students with King Reading Corner last, um, last school year, and she's back again because, hey, she's a multi-author. So this is Miss Alice Faye Duncan. She is a national board educator who writes books for children. She writes to help students remember forgotten memories from American history. She will be reading her newest book, Yellow Dog Blues, and conducting a Q&A with students, part of the Students with King Reading Corner and the Love Movement. Please help me give a warm welcome to Miss Alice Faye Duncan. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming on and talking with us. How are you? I am so very well, Tariq. Thank you for having me this morning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for um, accepting our invitation and coming back on the show. We appreciate it. So you're going to be reading Yellow Dog Blues to the students today. So let's go ahead and get into the book read. All righty. Healing Words 2022, Yellow Dog Blues, written by me, Alice Faye Duncan, and the illustrator is two-time Caldecott winner. Chris Roska, can you say it to, with me? He won the Caldecott twice. And if God says the same, maybe he'll win it three times with Yellow Dog Blues. Um, kiddos, I want you to understand that Yellow Dog Blues is a blues fable. It is a blues fable about love, law, loss, laughter, and it happens in the Mississippi Delta. Again, Yellow Dog Blues, written by me, Alice Faye Duncan, illustrator, Chris Raska. I dedicated the book in memory of my grandfather, who all my cousins called Uncle Leroy, in memory of my father, all my cousins called him Smokey, and Chris dedicated his, his uh, portion of the book to Libby. And our story goes like this. I woke up early one morning before the light of day. I fixed my dog a big pot of bones and breakfast scraps. Sometimes life is a mystery. Love is a mountain climb. The blues grabbed me like a shaking chill. I found my dog house. Say it with me. Empty. Yellow dog, I hollered with tears welling up my eyes. The rusty gate swung back and forth. My puppy love was, that's right gone. I crossed the road and asked Farmer Fred, did Yellow Dog pass this way? Bo Willie, he replied as he fed his spotted mule. Oh, Yellow hit Highway 61. I saw that hound dog running. I ran toward Cleveland. That's Cleveland, Mississippi, y'all. I ran toward Cleveland on 61 and searched behind the grocery store. I searched around the garbage bin and beneath the grocery porch. No dog here, called Mr. Yee, dressed in his store apron. His wife pointed north. Yee Jr. brightly chimed. I saw that dog on Dockery Farm where Muddy Waters played the blues. 
So I hiked my heels toward Dockery, but did not see a soul. All I found was a faded sign painted in big, big, bold letters. It said, Mississippi Boogie, visit Marigold, as in Marigold, Mississippi. Boogie Blues Club Marigold. I raised my thumb and hitched a ride. Marigold was far away. It was much too far to walk or run in the Mississippi heat. Aunt Jessie saw me on the road and stopped her Cadillac. Then we drove to Marigold to do what? To shimmy, to shake, and boogie. While Aunt Jessie and Mr. Willie danced under the disco lights, I searched the crowded club for my missing puppy love. He did not show up in Marigold, and my tears broke like a river. You better not stain my velvet seats, Aunt Jessie said, but she was a patient saint. She took her flower handkerchief and cleaned my snotty nose. I cried like a baby. I said, Let's leave this juke joint town. Mr. Willie waved goodbye while chomping on a fat cigar. We moseyed up the crossroads to Highway 8 and 1. Yellow dog, yellow dog, I hollered across the lonesome road. Yellow dog was nowhere in sight. That dog had come and gone. Aunt Jessie's good luck charm wasn't bringing us no such success. She got herself to thinking hard and followed common sense. She parked her caddy in Clarksdale at the Hicks Tamale Stand. A man on the corner gave a wild report like something we never heard. He said, I saw a yellow dog. That scamp left here on a greyhound bus. He was traveling with a band. A band? Aunt Jessie hollered to the heavens. Where can that little dog be? I studied the map across my lap and the answer looked back at me. Yellow dog moved to Memphis. He followed the city lights. He sings the blues on Bill Street now. He sings all day and all night. So what is the moral to this story? What is the lesson to this tale? Some dogs are very faithful. They will never leave your side. And some dogs ramble and run the road. They love you and then, that's right, they love you and then they're gone. And so what you will find kiddos and teachers is that when you get your copy of Yellow Dog Blues, it is going to give you a history of, of the Delta blues music. And it's then going to give you, it's going to highlight for you those several sections of the blues highway that Yellow Dog traveled and that Bo Willie traveled in search of his hound dog. And so Highway 61, as you will discover, Highway 61 from Yazoo, uh, Mississippi, up into Memphis, that is called the Blues Highway because there were several locations along Highway 61 where many of America's famous Delta Blues musicians were born. So if you think of B.B. King, one of the greatest Delta Blues musicians, he, he was raised in Indianola off Highway 61. If you think of Muddy Waters, okay, uh, uh, Muddy Waters, 
uh, he was, he gave us that song, Rolling Stone. He worked on Dockery Farms, right? Charlie Patton, who is considered the progenitor, the father of Delta Blues. Charlie Patton worked on Dockery Farms. The Marigold Blues Club, it was considered up until 2016. It's in Marigold off Highway 61. It was considered the... Um, the last one of the last existing plantation blues juke joints. And then can we say tamales, right? In Clarksdale, Mississippi, even now, there is a fav uh, famous tamale place called Hicks Tamales. And the reason why tamales are so important uh, to the Mississippi Delta is because Mexican migrant workers used to come to the Mississippi Delta to work in like the 20s, 30s, 40s. And when those migrants came and they they um, lived in community with the black sharecroppers, then the sharecroppers learned how to make tamales from the Mexican migrant workers. And what the sharecroppers did was they did not they 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 took the recipe of the Mexican migrant worker and then they made it into something of their own. So you will notice that Mexican tamales and Mississippi tamales, they have different texture. They don't, they're similar, but they, they're not the same. And so that's what you call synergy, right? When two good things come together to make something uh, new. Um, and so these are the types of things in the back matter of the book that kids will learn and kids will read about um, in this blues tale, Yellow Dog Blues. And again, uh, we, uh, 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 but I gotta mention one more thing. You know, in the, in the, in the book, we mentioned um, the Yellow Dog coming to Memphis, right? And playing the bl uh, blues on Bill Street, which is called Famous Blue Street. Well, if you follow Highway 61 from Yazoo, that's in the that's in the south, and you go all the way up north, the front door of the Mississippi Delta is Memphis, Tennessee, which is where I live. I live here in Memphis, Tennessee. And um, and Bill Street is where WC Handy, also considered a father of the blues because he was the first to take blues music and put it in musical notation. WC Handy wrote blues songs on Bill Street, BB King. He learned the skill of being a, a consummate performer on, on Bill Street. Uh, Robert Johnson, considered the father of rock and roll. He, he played at the Palace Theater doing uh, amateur nights on Bill Street. So Bill Street has a very uh, important part in American music history. And then last, we talk about the crossroads, right? And the crossroads is where supposedly Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. Say it with me. Didn't happen. Say it with me. Didn't happen. Robert Johnson did not sell his soul to the devil, um, but he did become a great blues musician. So I thank you all for listening to me read Yellow Dog Blues, and I now will open it up for Q&A. Yes, that was um, that was fantastic. And I felt like with that book, it was so educational. And like, especially at the end, you were talk talking about Yellow Dog Blues, the Delta Blues. So, I mean, hey, you were you were teaching us something. So we appreciate it. Um, the students and teachers, go ahead and comment your questions in the comments on um, Facebook and um, YouTube. And we'll have a chance to get to some of those questions. I'll try to get to as many as I can. But I go ahead and start off with this. A book like this, um, talking about, you know, Yellow Dog Blues, Delta Blues and stuff like this. How do you get the, like, where does the inspiration come from with writing books like this? Okay, so like, I, I live in Memphis, and in Memphis, like, teachers, you can write this down, WDIA. So I live in Memphis, radio station, WDIA, and when I was small, WDI, WDIA on Saturday morning, they used to, it used to be like Blues Saturday, right? And so they would play blues music in the morning into the afternoon, and they had famous DJs like uh, Rufus Thomas, who was a big stack uh, music recording artist. And so I would listen to the blues there. Uh, and living in Memphis, the blues is just a big thing. You know, uh, as a teenager, I would go to Bill Street and, and blues was all around. But the idea for the book 
came because in 2014, I had an opportunity to get a school, a teaching grant to go to the Mississippi Delta. And I studied civil rights and I studied the American music history. And so at, at, at one point, I wanted to do a book about the bow weevil, um, the bow weevil crisis where bow weevil attacked cotton in America. And so blues musicians started singing bow weevil blues songs, right? Y'all can look that up. You can have kids listen to bow weevil blues songs. Um, but then, but that story never really materialized um, nicely so that it could be a published book. And so I thought, well, what about one day I was driving on Highway 61 and I was passing, I was on my way to the BB King uh, Indianola Blues Museum. And we were passing all these like landmarks, right? That I knew from my from my studies in, in 2014. And I thought, you know what? What would it be like if um, a dog ran away and then a kid is following the dog up the the blues highway because i wanted to introduce students to those famous landmarks so by having the dog get lost and running up the highway then i could take students to those different landmarks and so it was just an idea that the good lord gave to me um and it worked and and so what happened also the way i was able to get a caldecott illustrator is that in 2016 in 2016, I wanted to do something intentional in the name of racial reconciliation. And so what I did was I said, you know what? Most times in publishing, they most times, they will pair a black writer with a black illustrator. So I said, I want to do something intentional in the name and under the banner of racial reconciliation, because at that time, you know, what was going on, the, the presidential election was going on, and, and there was just a great racial divide, even now as it is in America. And it, I think that divide has now grown wider and wider. And so we have to be more intentional about th doing things to bring a variety of races together, a variety of cultures together. We have to be intentional about operating in unity. We have to be intentional about being a person of peace and one who is a bearer of peace, right? Or yeah, bearer, not barrier, but bearer of peace. Um, and then Miss, so we have a question now, Miss McCormick's fourth grade class. She says, is this whole book based on a true story? That's from Lily in her 4305. Ah, uh, interesting. That is like such a fabulous question. Oh my God, that is such a fabulous question because guess what? It's not really based on a true story, right? I, I I had a beagle once, but the beagle didn't run away. I think my parents gave the beagle away because I was not uh, caring for it. I was a small child. It was their fault. They shouldn't have given a dog to a small child. How was I going to care for it? But anyway, but no. So when I was, I was one day I was reflecting on this story and I said, what is this story really about? Because it's a metaphor. I'm like, I'm knowing this story is a metaphor. Like what is it about? And it came to me. You know, the moral of the story is some dogs stay and then some dogs leave, right? And every, it came to me that this is a story about relationships. It's a story about friendships. Every friendship that you have, it does not come to stay. It does not mean that you are bad or the friend is bad. It just means that that friendship has, has you know, has come to the end of the journey and and you move on to make some other friends, right? That's also how it is sometimes with our parents, because I realized this was really a story about my mom and my dad in fifth grade, right? When, you know, and and our family separated because my dad, I mean, like, is this too personal? But my dad had suffered a, a variety of trauma in the Vietnam War. And while he loved me and while he loved my mom very much, he just could, he could not stay in the confines of of the family environment because he was dealing with trauma. And so he had to go to live alone. He just, he, and he had to go and heal, right? And so this book is really about relationships, letting children know, you know, those blues trail locations, right? But also letting children know that, hey, all friendships don't come to stay. All relationships don't come to stay. And that's okay. Cause life is about what? Life is about change. Life is about growing. Life is also about letting go sometimes, right? Right? Yeah. It is. And if you don't understand that now, 
you will later. As the, uh, as the old people say, just keep a living. Just keep it. <laughs> Absolutely. And we actually got a question from Dana Farrar Pluff. She says, yes. how long did it take you to write the book? How did you get the illustrations to look like they were really sewn onto the page? Oh, because they were. Those illustrations are Caldecott worthy. Somebody said again, those illustrations are Caldecott worthy. Because what Chris Rosca did was he literally, he embroidered he embroidered the illustrations and then what could not be embroidered, he painted, right? And he wanted to capture something rustic. He wanted to capture something that was earthy because sharecroppers who created the blues were working with the earth. They were working with uh, burlap sacks, right? Uh, picking them, bailing them. And so he, uh, the burlap was too rough because he did try storyboards on burlap. So what he did was he toned it down and he used linen, which also has the same quality as the burlap. Ah, okay, nice. And then Shelly Porter, Brayden from Elkins Elementary in Arkansas would like to know how many books have you written? And you got them behind you actually. <laughs> okay, uh, like I've written like, these are just a few, but I've written now over 10 books and I've got like, look for me, look, look for me. Like there is going to be from now until 2026. In some of those years between now and 26, I'll have two books released. And look, and if you enjoyed this program and you want to invite me to visit your school virtually, I am available for virtual visits, right? The books are available wherever books are sold. You can get them at Amazon. You can get them at Barnes and Noble. You can get them at Bookshop. You can also, if you are in a school and you want to get classroom sets, you can get them from Follett. You can get them from Ingram. You can get them from Permabound. Uh, my books are available. I've got a book on the civil rights. I can't remember. Man, I got a book on Memphis Martin and the Mountaintop, the sanitation, the sanitation strike and the assassination of King, which the King Center figures prominently in their bookstore. Opa Lee, I've got a new Juneteenth book that was did, you know, that was all over the place. So if you want to know about a freedom fighter who is living, Opa Lee, then you can get my book, uh, Opa Lee and what it means to be free, which is the story of Juneteenth. Awesome. And yeah. And now Miss McCormick, again, coming back with another question. She says, when did you realize you were passionate about becoming an author? And that's from Navia. OK, well, I was the only child and my mother's only child. And so I was always I spent my alone time writing because I love to read. In fact, y'all, I went to go visit my first grade teacher yesterday because she gave me the gift of literacy and I wanted to give her a copy of Yellow Dog Blue. So I've always been in love with uh, reading and writing and doing poems and doing short stories. And but it was when I met the, the uh, poet. Etheridge Knight, he came to my classroom when I was in sixth grade and he told us that, you know, he was writing books for a living. And I said, OK, awesome. Then I can move these books from these little journals that I've got and I can publish books. I can write books myself. So in sixth grade, I decided I was going to be a published author, became a teacher so that I could make a living and until books took off. And so now. We're here together. Congratulations to you and Miss Sharon Lill. How did you know slash learn all the information that's from Justin in second grade? That's a great question. Well, you know, it, it took research. It took visiting the Mississippi Delta and, and it took reading. Like in my leisure time, I would, uh, you know, opposed to reading novels and, and things like that. In my leisure time, I actually spent that time reading books about the blues. In fact, last week, y'all, I read this really wonderful book written by Chris Thomas King. Uh, some of the grown folks might know him from uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And anyways, and, and so I am an independent learner. Because of Mrs. Johnson, my, my first grade uh, teacher, I'm an independent learner. I ain't got to wait for nobody to make me read no book, okay? Uh, look, there are things that, that I want to understand and I want to learn more about and that's the key to reading. That's why reading is so powerful because you look, the Bible says that you know once you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need to teach Teacher. Well, in the real world, in the secular world, oftentimes there are times you don't need the teacher because you can read books on your own. You don't have to wait for a teacher to assign you a book. If you want to know more about race cars, if you want to know about cosmetology, how to, if you want to know about how more how to do a TikTok video, how to use Facebook, you know, read the find the book and read it yourself. You ain't got to wait for the teacher. Yeah. And that's that's so true, because like I was actually looking at a podcast yesterday and it was talking about 
reading books is literally like pretty much like the foundation of life. You want to know how to do something, read a book. Because it's a book on it, almost everything. So. Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. that's the key. Okay, so let's see. We got Shelly Porter, George from Elkins Elementary in Arkansas would like to know, who was your favorite illustrator to work with? Since, you know, you really oh, my favorite illustrator to work with is right over here. His okay. name is Gregory Christie. He lives in Atlanta. He is oh, doing my new book. Yeah, <laughs> look, I am... Um, I'm writing a new book in 2023. This time next year, in 2023, I am doing a new book about Coretta Scott King. It is called Coretta's Journey, The Life and Times of Coretta Scott King. And Chris Roska is the illustrator. And I just talked to my editor last week and I said, how are the illustrators, how are the illustrations going? And here, write this word down. It's a beautiful word. She said, the illustrations are majestic. And I said, of course they're majestic. Why? Because it's about who? Coretta Scott King. Majestic. Hey. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Miss Alice, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for coming on um, the Students with King Reading Corner. It was a pleasure having you. It, it was, was a pleasure fantastic. to be with you. Oh, yeah. And also, also, hey, go to my website, alicefayduncan.com, if you're interested in virtual um, in virtual yes. visits. I'm available. Uh, go anywhere where books are sold to get any of my books. Oh, activity guides. Activity guides for all of my books are, are located on my website. If you need an activity guide to Yellow Dog Blues, it's located on my website. And also, y'all, do the survey. If you enjoyed our time here, you better take your phone and do the survey so we can get some good programming at the King Center this year and all the other years to come. Yes, absolutely. And thank you once again so much for coming on. Guys, thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of Students with King. It was a pleasure being your moderator. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram at Tyreek Wynn underscore TV. Check out all the latest things I've been working on and check me out on Fatal Attraction on TV One as well. I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Donald, who's going to go ahead and close out our program. Hey, thank you, Tyreek. Thank you. Alice, thank everybody for coming. The saying goes, everything that's good, the time's run out. Our time had ran out for Student Reading Corner today, but we have one for you every month. The schedule's already out. Check our website, www.thekingcenter.org, and also you can go and get educational material to help in your classroom. So look forward to seeing you again. Once again, teacher, please do the survey. And also check out our nonviolent 365 training. Once again, thank you for coming, and I'll give you a round of applause to everybody. Y'all, well done. Nonviolence is the answer to the crucial political and moral questions of our time. The need for man to overcome oppression and violence without resorting to violence and oppression. Man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. changed the world when he demonstrated what could be achieved through nonviolence. Now, you can learn how to live and practice this philosophy yourself through Nonviolence 365 Online, an innovative digital experience developed by the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change. Nonviolence 365 Online features extensive video interviews with real nonviolence practitioners, including the King Center CEO, Dr. Bernice A. King, King Center certified instructors and trainers, and veterans of the civil rights movement explorations of the historic campaigns that helped Dr. King forge his philosophy, immersive, annotated reading experiences that enhance Dr. King's most influential writings on nonviolence, custom activities, including quizzes and interactive scenarios to help you practice along the way, real-world exercises to help you start applying nonviolence in your daily life. Nonviolence 365 is a love-centered way of thinking, speaking, engaging, and acting that leads to personal, cultural, and societal transformation. 
It isn't just a concept for philosophers or political leaders. Nonviolence 365 is a powerful, practical approach to dealing with conflict and dismantling injustice. Whether it's in your personal life, in your school or workplace, your local community, or a national movement. Dr. King, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, and many others sought to create the beloved community, a society built on global cooperation and equity. This wasn't a lofty utopian dream. It's a realistic and achievable goal because each and every one of us has the power to make it happen by committing to nonviolence as a way of life. Take the first step today with Nonviolence 365 online.